the Scottish fiddle calendar. It was the year of the jig. And uh, the result was what we called basically the jilted, kilted hedgehog. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> So we were working on the jilted, kil kilted hedgehog today, and I think something was said about that needs a story. So David whips out his phone, asks uh, AI about a story for a jilted, kilted hedgehog. And we would like to share the result with you. So here we go. The tale of a jilted, kilted hedgehog. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a quiet corner of the Scottish Highlands, lived a hedgehog named Hamish. <laughs> Hamish was no ordinary hedgehog. He wore a small, specially made kilt his grandmother had stitched for him. The kilt, adorned with a tartan pattern, was his pride and joy. Hamish had always been a bit of a loner, but his heart was captured by a lovely hedgehog named Flora. <laughs> Flora was, a char was as charming as the first bloom of heather in the spring, and Hamish fell deeply in love with her. He mustered all of his courage and decided to declare his feelings at the annual Highland Hedgehog Festival. <laughs> On the day of the festival, Hamish polished his quills and adjusted his quilt, his kilt, his quilted kilt. <laughs> With a bouquet of wild flowers in his paw, he approached Flora, who was laughing and chatting with friends. Taking a deep breath, Hamish stepped forward and confessed his love. Oh, <laughs> But Flora's response was not what Hamish had hoped for. She glanced at him, a hint of pity in her eyes, and gently but firmly said, Oh, Hamish, you are sweet, but my heart belongs to Fergus. Oh. Fergus, a strong and dashing hedgehog, stood nearby, his own kilt swaying in the breeze. Hamish's, Hamish's heart sank as he saw the affection in Flora's eyes. When she looked at Fergus, he managed a weak smile and congratulated the pair and walked away, feeling his world crumble. Oh, Days turned into weeks, and the once- Vibrant Hamish became a shadow of his former self. He wandered the hills aimlessly, his kilt now a sad reminder of the love he had lost. One evening, as the sun set behind the mountains, Hamish sat by a quiet loch, his reflection rippling in the water. He wondered if he would ever feel whole again. In the silence, the wind whispered through the heather, and Hamish realized that his heart, though broken, still beat. He stood up, brushed off his kilt, and decided that one day he would find a new path, even if it took time. For now he allowed himself to grieve, knowing that healing, like the Scottish Highlands, was both harsh and beautiful. The end. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Chat make GPT. <laughs> so we present to you the hope for Hamish, the jilted, kilted hedgehog. One, two, one, two.
So the next uh, few tunes that we're going to be playing for you are types of tunes called Strathspeys. Now, the word Strathspey has a meaning in Scotland, which I will tell you. It has a meaning outside of Scotland, too. It does as well. <laughs> the word Strath means valley. Spey is one of the longest rivers that goes through Scotland, so Strathspey means the valley of the Spey River, which is where this style of tune originally came from. It's um, sort of... Uh, uh, just the way you describe it is you get a lot of what's called the Scottish snap, which is a rhythm that goes from a short note to a long note, which sounds remarkably like this. That's a snap. That's a snap too, on a different instrument. So these, um, these tunes are called Lieutenant Colonel Bailey of Lee's Strathspey, Karen's Reel, which is also a Strathspey, Loch Ba, ah, ah. <laughs> and the Dukers of Dune. I'm not quite sure what that's all I about. I think the Dukers of Dune were a relative of the Vipper of Vip from Dr. Seuss. Ah! <laughs> that makes sense then. <laughs> wow, that was a big goal. <laughs>
I mean, I was really good. Okay. So, um, one of the most famous uh, composers of Scottish music in the 18th century was a fellow by the name of Neil Gow. And Neil Gow was uh, from a family of, of tartan weavers. And um, as a young boy, he learned how to play the violin so well that um, he, uh, he became one of the uh, High, most highly um, respected uh, fiddle players in Scotland, and he w he went all over um, his section of Scotland playing for different lords and ladies, and also playing for um, for different dance events. Uh, the, if you wanted to be the top of the town anywhere in the 18th century, you would invite all your rich uh, rich friends over to to dance in a ball. And Neil Gow would uh, write the music for this, and he he and his brother Donald would. Uh, would entertain and provide music for these uh, for these dance balls. Uh, Neil Gow's brother played the bass, as they called it back then. We call it a cello today. But um, there's a lot of, uh, of prints and paintings of Neil Gow and his brother Donald playing for a variety of, uh, of notables back in the 18th century. Um, Donald uh, passed away before Neil did, and uh, Neil was uh, driven into despair and was, was so sad that he stopped playing his fiddle for, for over a year. But before he stopped playing, he wrote this piece of music, Neil Gow's Lament for the Death of His Brother Donald. And we're going to be playing this as a sort of a, like a quartet almost, it's a sort of a, or a, tr a trio. A quartet would assume four. There are three parts. Three parts. Three parts. He's continuum. He's and continuum. That's 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 famous. Uh, that that's that's fancy words for it. Something. There we go.
I'm just going to play a couple of, of my favorites for you. Um, first one's a rather personal tune for me. Um, silkies are mythical critters that are seals in the water, and they become human when they hit dry land. Well, I have a couple of silkies in my house. They love the water. Sometimes the muddier the better. <laughs> yeah, chlorine, fresh, salt, mud, doesn't matter. All water is good. So uh, this, this set is called the Silky Sisters set. It starts off with a jig called the Silky Sisters in honor of my two little silkies. And then I'm going to go into a tune called Breaking Morn. It's a dance tune. It's real. And then into an old woman would. What the old woman would do, we don't know. But we know that she would. And how much wood would a woodchuck chuck?
you don't think you would get out of this uh, without performing yourselves, do you? <laughs> well, part, part of Scottish music is the community aspect of it. And um, there's a very uh, famous tradition in Scotland where you get together with a bunch of friends and you, you share your talents with each other no matter what level your talents may be. So, and it doesn't always have to be singing or dancing or playing music. It can be uh, showing how, how good you are at, um, at painting uh, things like paint, uh, pictures and things like that. Just whatever, if you're a good joke teller. But we thought we would um, have you folks join in with a, with a song called The Waters of Kilskew. And we have... Um, very uh, subtly given you the words to this. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to play the tune through twice so that you can get familiar with the, uh, with the melody. And if you sing a note that is not what we are singing or playing, that's what we call a variation. <laughs> and it's just fine. Um, so, so please sing along. Uh, we will be singing as well, so don't feel that you're by yourselves. So remember, we're going through it twice, and if you can't pronounce the word, come up with something clever. Pibroth. <laughs> yeah, like pibroth or or morombo. The the that one word you don't know how to pronounce is morombo. <laughs> so it's a waltz, by the way. So if you want a waltz, you can do that too. One, two, three, one, two. 
a bunch of people singing. Thank you so much. We also had a special guest on stage with us who has been practicing for this very, very seriously. We had Annika Pertu on Scottish <laughs> Quilt. to play for you tonight but I wanted to yeah it went really quickly <laughs> but but I can promise you we will be back again next year um, if you are interested in keeping up with what's going on with Strathganey and the people involved in it um, I helpfully posted a couple of QR codes around the amphitheater we've got one at the table over there we've got a couple on the uh, on the pillars here you can scan it with your phone it'll take you to our Facebook page you can uh, follow the page and we'll keep you up to stuff um, but thank you again for coming it's turned into a lovely lovely evening and just a couple of uh, people and institutions I'd like to thank um, before we play our last number um, First of all, we've been in residence at Westminster College, and I cannot thank uh, Dr. Kathy Richardson, uh, Dr. Jamie McMinn, the chairs of the School of Music, the entire School of Music faculty, for supporting an endeavor like the uh, Strathganey School of Scottish Fiddling. Like I said, this is our 10th year, and we're going to be coming back. So it's wonderful to be here. Thank you to New Wilmington Borough for allowing us the use of this glorious amphitheater. This is such a wonderful place to uh, come and perform. So we really appreciate the community for coming out and supporting us and letting us use this great facility. Um, thank you to the St. Andrew Society of Pittsburgh for supporting our students so beautifully and coming and supporting our concerts. It is deeply appreciated, your commitment to supporting the Scottish arts and the education to keep